Noah. I'm Kevin Cuff. And I know you're wondering, who's that masked man? My name is Bob France. And we are the Word Bros. We are the writers of many fine comics, like Metal Shark Bro, and Metal Shark Bro 2, and Ninja Nuns, <laughs> and the Dust Pirates. And you, yes, you are watching BJ Kicks. BJ Kicks. <laughs> What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them. All for your viewing pleasure. Now, as we speak, I am working on the ultimate comic book room. But it obviously didn't always look this great. I mean, you guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek in the present, but I just wanted to let you know, this is the first in what's technically gonna be a three-part series showing you exactly how this room came together. So in part one, which you're viewing right now, you're going to get a very, very early look at the room, like the blank, the bare bones room as it was when I moved in here. I'm going to show you where things are going to go. I'm going to paint. And then in part two, well, how about we talk about what happens in part two when part one's done? So sit back, relax. Um, I'm very excited to bring you this completed room. I'm still not quite done, but by the time part two comes out, the room will be done and part three will come out shortly thereafter. Now, I do have a bit of a technical note. I do need to mention there are some issues with the audio at the beginning of the first half of this video. There were a lot of scenes that I shot with my phone. And I didn't realize there's an issue with my iPhone's microphone. So I apologize for that, but bear with me. It does get better in the second half of the video. So anyway, let's now take a look and see just how this room came together. All right, guys, so you guys are getting the first look, sneak peek at what will be the new comic room. As you can see, I got some wire shelving um, and my plan for these wire shelves, if they will fit, is to put them right in this closet. So that's where the short boxes will live, even though they have beautiful artwork. They're not going to be displayed because this room is kind of small, so it'll get cluttered really quickly. Um, so from here, I'll show you from like the interior corner of the room so you can see what we got going on. So there's the rest of my house. So on this wall is going to be my TV, we a tall shelf for like my regular books, not on these and stuff like, you know, book books, I guess. Uh, maybe a plant or something. Um, in the middle of the room, I'm gonna grab, I can get a futon or something, some kind of little sofa so I can sit on. And then right here, that's where the desk is gonna go. The brand new L-shaped desk. And then along that back wall, headed toward the closet. That is where my uh, half, half wall shelves are gonna go. And that's where my Omnis will be displayed with some room to grow. And if I need to take over this side of the room for those eventually, then I'll do that as well. But I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to paint this room. I think this room is going to end up being gray and not this new apartment beige eggshell color here. But yeah, so that's the room. All right. Update 99. Uh, so this wire shelf is just going to be too tall to go in the closet. And I think it's an inefficient use of space to put it in the closet, considering I'm gonna need some kind of storage out here, like drawers and stuff for my lights when I'm not using them, things like that. So this closet is going to have to actually serve as a closet. And I might, I might put like a bookshelf in here or something, but I don't know. But for right now, the closet is gonna be where my lights and everything go when they're not being used so I can put things away. If I need space, for, extra space for some short boxes, they can go up here. And um, yeah, that'll be that. So for right now, the wire rack, imagine this five rows high. So basically floor to ceiling with short boxes. I think I have 15 of those. So that works out perfectly. Then right there, it's gonna be the shelf. In this corner, will be the L-shaped desk. I'll probably put the long side this way and the short side that way. We'll find, we'll see. And then a white shelf, either along this wall this way or that way. I've got 
to figure out what would look best on camera for my marketing videos and then TV, maybe some half shells down there if I need to down that way. All right. So here's me running into my first major headache. You see how that slanted? It's because I put it in wrong. The first post on the wire rack I put in wrong. So here I am playing cleanup, putting together the other three, trying to hide my frustration at being so wrong at the first one. All right, guys, so you can't tell this, but it's been a few hours. Um, right after I put all like three of the posts up, we had to run some errands, my wife wanted some food, and I went to Home Depot and got some painting supplies. Uh, so I've picked out the color for the new digs, uh, and I'm excited about that. And I brought some of my lights from home so that you guys can see a little bit better what's going on and I can see a little bit better how this color is applying. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I had to go get some tools because a little threading mistake I have to fix to get that last post up and I'll finish putting together the shelf. Once I put together the shelf, I'm gonna like place it in different areas in the room, see where I want it to go. But I'm gonna prepare to paint. As of right now, it's Sunday evening. I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint right now, if I'm gonna paint in the morning, um, but this whole room is gonna be painted. And I'll tell you guys the color after I finish putting this little post up and putting the shelf together. So uh, let's do it. So here's the part where we find out that I'm not as handy as maybe anyone thought I was. <laughs> so here's me using pliers, a vice grip, and whatever else is in my father-in-law's tool bag, but we got it worked out. So now I can actually put all the little brackets up and that took even longer than I thought it was gonna take. Th that's the story of this whole project. If I thought it was gonna take an hour, it's gonna take a day. All right, so the shelf is complete. Um, that top rack, that last rack, uh, it's not completely level. Like, you can kind of see there's more black there than there is on the other fittings. Um, I'm hoping that putting some weight on it will help to kind of force it down into the little gasket. Um, but other than that, a rubber mallet would fix it, but I don't have a rubber mallet. Uh, but the important thing is we got this assembled. So now we can see how many short boxes will fit and all that, although I only have one short box here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and put a little sample of the paint on the wall, so let's see how that looks. All right, so uh, the type of paint I got is called, uh, it's from Bear Ultra Premium, but it's called Lunar Surface. My goal was to have a gray room, like, but I want it to be like dark enough so where you can see the contrast, but not so dark that it's gonna be difficult to paint over because I'm gonna have to return this in a year to this disgusting eggshell beige color. Um, I like that. It's dark. All right, so while we watch this time lapse of me prepping the room for painting, let's talk about how much of a uh, impulse decision this was. Like, I knew I wanted the room to be a certain color. There's no reason for me to be painting literally the day I just moved a bunch of stuff in the house. But um, for whatever reason, that's what I did. Um, and man, this painting, this painting took up so much of this time. M mind you, I didn't even start painting or start this whole taping process. This is 9 p.m. on the Saturday of the move. And we started moving at 10 a.m. Uh, but here I am painting the walls. I literally said at the beginning of this, oh, this might take me an hour and a half. So many rookie mistakes here. I'm taking the lawnmower approach so that I don't miss a spot with the paint. Turns out you're supposed to just spread it out and just touch up whatever needs to be touched up like a day later or something. So uh, toward the end, I'm definitely going to run out of paint and have to go buy another quart or pint or whatever it is. So that's funny. All right, guys. So calling it a night. It's currently 1.46 a.m. Um, and... I don't know. I haven't painted anything since I was a kid and like helped my dad out. But um, watching HGTV, I think has paid off. The one thing I felt really, really good about is these uh, these lines, right? Like on the the baseboards. I saw a tip on HGTV. The dude was like, you pull up the painter's tape while the paint is still wet and you get a clean line. So I was good. Like, oh, granted, this section I did last 
this I did first and the tape was like all on the wall. So I'm gonna have to like redo that tomorrow. But I'm excited to see what this all looks like when it dries. Um, already, already I do love the way this white pops off of this. Like just for comparison, you can see the, the color it was up at the top and you can see how it's just kind of bland and kind of blends together. I love the way this white, like this white looks more white next to this gray. And so whenever I bring all my shelves back in here and then we get like the color from the comic books, I'm gonna mount up my TV over there and put like an LED strip behind it. I think it's just gonna go a long way to helping this room present better on camera. And I'm excited about it. So a year in this room is gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be cool. All right, new shirt means it's a new day. So now it's Sunday morning and I decided to start by prepping the entire room instead of just one section at a time because that seemed like it would be a more efficient use of my time. Uh, so there we go. Getting all those tapes, tape, that, that tape secured down, you know? All right, just checking in. I've spent what feels like an hour just taping up the trim work at the top. Um, painting doesn't take a long time. Like I knocked that wall out over there in like 45 minutes with the exception of like the top of it. It's the prep, all this taping, this taping takes so much time, but I know it's going to be so worth it in the end. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get, let's stop talking and get this work done. Well guys, we had a tiny bit of a mishap. I don't even know if you guys picked it up, um, but basically when I finished uh, painting last night, when I was like, all right, I'm gonna call it a night. I went and I rinsed out my brushes or the rollers and um, you know, I went on about my business, right? And so I went to pick up the rollers today to paint. You guys saw when I tried to do that little trim work like the brushes were like soaking wet. I didn't even realize it. Like I thought they were dry enough. As Soon as I put the brush to the wall, water just starts ripping down. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, like the baseboards, the carpet, what's gonna happen? So it was a disaster. Thankfully, I have one extra roll. So obviously this isn't a detail brush or detail roll. So I'm gonna just focus on the large swaths of the wall that have yet to be painted. And then um, hopefully I went ahead and set up, set a, set the other brushes outside. So hopefully those dry in uh, the time it takes for that to happen. And I guess I could always get like a towel or something. We just moved, so like everything's packed up. But anyway, I'm gonna focus on these huge swaths of wall and I'll record that because that's all satisfying and whatnot. And uh, we'll, we'll worry about the trim parts later. So, yeah, after the setback, I just decided to just focus on a whole different part of the wall. And that's kind of been the theme during this whole putting this room together is like there is setback after setback. And I just have to, in that moment, focus on something else. Overall, um, I found the painting to be very therapeutic. Um, we've been going over, we were going through a lot these last few months, my wife, my family and I, uh, the baby in the hospital, packing, moving, um, it was for a second we didn't know where we were gonna live like we've been scrambling for like three months so being able to just calm down slow down relax and put some paint on the wall felt oddly satisfying um but it was very relaxing very therapeutic and i enjoyed it so uh this was probably my favorite part of putting this room together um because it allowed me to to slow down and let my feelings catch up to me so Two statements, two statements that are very true in this moment. One, uh, we are in the home stretch. We're almost done. Like You can basically see what's left. It's that section over there, a little bit of this wall, and then basically the very top of each wall, right? So we're in the home stretch. We're almost done. That's true. 
Second thing that's true is I am running low on paint. And I feel that one gallon of paint should have been more than enough for this space. So that means I must have been doing something wrong. Um, I did kind of get smarter a little bit toward the end of this process. I don't know if you guys saw at the beginning, but I was leaving these huge spaces open at the top and bottom of the wall. Uh, like, oh, I'll fill those in later with the trimming brush. But it's like, if you spend all that time prepping, right, and, and, and taping and all that, you should trust the work that you did. And let's just bring that roller right on down to that line. Um, so that when we're doing our trim work, it really is just the trim work, just like one stroke of a, a brush. Uh, so that's one thing that I've switched up. Um, and then I think, especially on the first wall, I was like trying to give it as thick a coat as possible so that I wouldn't have to give it another pass. But I think in my amateurism, that just means I gave it like four passes in one. So, um, yeah, I really would love to say that I finished this whole room without having to go and get a single ounce of more paint. Because if it comes down to it, if I need any more paint, it'll literally be like one pint of paint. Um, and even then, like uh, maybe, a, maybe a quart? A quart is two pints. A pint is two cups. A pint. I think I would need a pint. But anyway, we're, we're getting there. We're almost done. Almost done. Well, guys, <laughs> today has not been my day. Um, first of all, I had an appointment with AT&T Fiber for them to come set up internet for us. Uh, that way we could have, you know, stream our content and upload YouTube videos, all that stuff. Set an appointment for 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. today. Um, 2.30, I get a text from them like, hey, our tech is running late. Cool. Three o'clock comes, four o'clock comes, five o'clock comes. I'm like, okay, what is going on? So I call them and they're like, oh, the tech that was assigned, he's running late on a job, so we're gonna send another one out. They'll be there by six. Six o'clock comes, 6.30 comes, no tech. So then I call and they're like, oh yeah, we don't know what happened. Sometimes they just don't finish their work so they just can't get to all their appointments. You can reschedule. So. Supposedly, they're coming tomorrow. That threw off all of my plans for today, though. Um, and then I went ahead and just went to Home Depot. I got some more paint because I was trying so hard to stretch that last little bit with the paintbrush. Um, but I went ahead and just got another um, half gallon of paint. So I'm about to go ahead and finish up this job, finish up uh, these those few areas at the top of the room that I left out. And then um, there's a couple of areas of trim at the bottom I need to touch up. And uh, but I'm doing all that tonight and then uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll move some furniture and stuff back in here and put my office desk together. So that'll be dope. All right. So before we look at the inside of the books, um, what we're looking at here is the direct market cover and the standard edition cover. What's the difference? That's a great question, actually. So the direct market cover is only available at uh, your comic book stores or places like GeographicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, uh, In Stock Trades, and the standard edition cover here uh, is available everywhere, like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and places like that, and all those other places I just uh, mentioned. So, Alicia. Who did this cover again? Michael Cho, and the also the difference is that this one had a different color than, I mean, cover than this, this, this one. one? Uh -huh. And this one was Michael Cho, and the other one was Jeff Kirby. Good job. We didn't uh, do any of the inside work, though. Good, that's right. That was Steve Ditko. That is Steve Ditko. So, even... All right, guys, so the painting, the painting is done. Uh, so while the paint is still wet, like there, you can see, you can see there's a couple of areas that are still wet, they're still drying. But while it's still wet, I need to take off the uh, painter's tape from some of this trim. So let me go ahead and do that. So that's really dope. So overall, I'm definitely happy with the way the room turned out. Um, there's a few spots that could afford to be touched up a little bit, but again, 
I gotta paint this back to the boring seashell, whatever color you wanna call that before we move out of here. So no need to get it perfect. That just means I'm gonna have to make be even more meticulous, painting it back to that boring color 12 months from now. Um, but as far as you know, the purposes of this video uh, or what this room is supposed to serve as, you know, it's gonna it's gonna fulfill that function just fine. Except there's a spot on the wall that I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle right there because I need I need to fix that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and break up this video. I think we've seen enough. You just watch me paint a comic room. This is boring. I promise. In part two, we're gonna get to the fun stuff. You're gonna see my new desk, how my shelves are gonna be laid out, and of course, I'm gonna bring the books in here. So uh, stay tuned for part two. It's coming soon. Until then, I hope you saw something you like in this video. If not, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Make sure you read what you buy and uh, be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round.